Hello and welcome to Gladiator Miniatures and Fighting Fifteenths. Other makers of cheap instructional videos are available. And today I'm going to have a look at uh, a Siva vulcanising press. Uh, this is a key piece of equipment in making moulds and it's very simple. Um, the Siva press, it's a nine inch press, is quite compact. And as you can see here, I actually keep it on a very robust wheeled trolley so I can just move it where I need it to be and when it's not in use I just tuck it out of the way. Um, some presses are really big and you just can't do that. Um, it's very simple really. Um, basically what a vulcanizer does is apply heat and pressure to um, rubber in a mould can and uh, the time under heat and pressure cures the rubber to make a mould. Um, as you can see at the bottom here we have a bottle jack which has got a pressure gauge on. Uh, jacks with pressure gauges on aren't easily available in the UK uh, and even where I've seen them available in America they're quite expensive. Um, this is a replacement one for the original bottle jack that was on this press and it was uh, basically machined for me by Siba. Um, they obviously knew which jack to use and they just sort of machined in a, uh, a pressure gauge and it cost £300 to fix it, which uh, considering the jack is uh, 50 quid um, is quite a reasonable amount of money, but I say it's non-standard and it's neat, it's really. Um, you don't have to have uh, a bottle jack with a pressure gauge on. If you're really experienced and you know how the whole setup feels when you crank up the pressure on the jack, you don't need it. Um, however, a pressure gauge is really useful if you're dealing with low temperature silicon and delicate parts where you need to keep close eye on the pressure. Right, moving up, the columns. Um, this is a four column organizing press. You can get some with three columns. I think they're slightly more prone to producing lopsided moulds, um, but they'll, they'll do the job. There are two steel plates with ceramic, and these are the heated plates. There's a, a lead going into the back of each, which obviously goes to a thermocouple, and it's used to read off the temperature of the plates. And right at the top, we have the control box. The SIBA controls are relatively complex for a vulcanizer. You've got temperature readouts for the upper and lower platens, a timer, and a switch to put it from manual to timed operation, and an off switch. Um, basically, I have a process timer set to two and a half hours, and for a low temperature silicon mold from Coca, I will actually run a mold for five hours, so two lots of process at a temperature of initially 85 degrees for two and a half hours and then 90 degrees for the other two and a half hours. Coca cream is supposed to cure at 90, but curing it as low a temperature as possible reduces shrinkage. Right, I've got a mold that I'm laying out at the moment and normally what you do is turn on the vulcanizer when you're about to start laying out the mold and by the time you finish laying out the mould, it's all ready to receive the, the mould. So what I'm going to do is turn on the vulcanizer and then finish out laying out my mould. So I turn it on, switch it to manual, and that means it's just on. The plates will gradually heat up. They're currently set at 19 and 20, which is the ambient temperature, and the 90 degrees underneath is for temperature that it's aiming to get at. But as I said, I tend to vulcanize my molds at 85 just to reduce shrinkage. So I'm going to just adjust the temperature there and there and let it come up to temperature and go up and make the mold. If you take a quick look at the time dial, you see it's set to two and a half hours. Um, you can actually use one of the little screws to change the setting from hours to something else but um, this is what works for me in general if your vulcanizer works don't play with it um, if you were to use traditional black rubber with natural rubber molds you'd be vulcanizing at 150 degrees centigrade um, that's quite hot and it 
does produce molten more, more shrinkage. There's also high temperature silicon which will vulcanize at 150 and I find that gives about 5% shrinkage which is quite a lot on a tiny tiny figure really. Um, so I tend to prefer low temperature silicon and I'll get away with less than 1% shrinkage if I do it this way. So the figure is more the size that it, it, it was when it started. Um, right, okay, I'm gonna go off and, and finish laying out the mold and I'll be back when the temperature's reached 85 degrees. All right, we're back and as you can see, after a fairly short time, it's about 10 minutes, the vulcanizer is virtually up to temperature. Uh, I'd already started laying out the mold before I turned on the vulcanizer and I've basically just completed it um, in the 10 or 15 minutes that this has been warming up. And if you have a look, it sit around the casting room and here we are, mold can all ready to go. Uh, one of the key things about uh, the mold can is this gap here. And you see it's quite large at the moment. When you put it in the vulcanizer and apply pressure, it's important that there is still a gap about half um, a centimetre. Um, this means that the top plate isn't rammed firmly down on the outer ring um, because if that happens all the pressure is applied only to the metal and nothing inside and you can get a malformed mould. So the important thing is there must be a gap here. Um, if you use a mould can that goes into an oven you may not need to do this because it may be more enclosed but if you use this type of can um, then you need a gap. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take it over to here, stick it in the vulcanizer. There's enough gap for the can to get into, and I will start again when that's in position. Okay, so now we have the mold can in the vulcanizer. Uh, one thing I like to do is to make sure that it's fairly central around. The plates so the gap under here I can feel it slightly more over here I'll just nudge that. Uh, bear in mind this is hot uh, but it's only 90 ish degrees and I'm being very careful not to touch the plates uh, if so only very briefly um, I can't really operate that, that camera and use gloves so unfortunately I can't be entirely safe doing this but uh, if you keep it central then you're fairly sure that the pressure is going to be evenly applied over the can rather than say have a, um, a slope to your mould which is some, some feature. Right so what we do now is we crank up a jack. So we stick in the lever and what we're going to do is take it up to roughly 2000 psi or 150 bar. You can see the jack moves the mould up quite slowly and eventually it will stop. Uh, when it's reached there you can just check that the gap around here is roughly equal so it's central in the organising press. But we haven't yet got any pressure on it so what we're going to do is carry on cranking this pump up. And eventually feel some resistance so it start putting pressure on okay so what we're going to do is squeeze up to 2000 psi everyone has their own preferences this is what I work at um, now this is just the base pressure it will rise as the rubber in the can expands with heat then the pressure would increase and if you're dealing with delicate parts, you want to keep an eye on the pressure and keep knocking it back. This means just taking a little valve there, releasing it, letting the plates fall slightly, and then tightening that back up again and cranking back up to pressure. That's also a way of bumping air out of the can. So it's also good practice, once you've got it up to pressure, is to, I can't do this with one hand, um, is to let off some pressure and then bump it back up to the pressure you require and that helps get rid of air in a really tight can assembly. Um, so there you are, well you can see now at the top 
the temperatures have plummeted from 85 uh, and what we need to do is get those pressures back up to 85 before we even think about uh, setting the timer for the mould. So what I'm going to do is let those rise and then I'll be back. Right, we're back again and the vulcanizer has got back up to its temperature for vulcanizing, uh, slightly over on the upper, 85 on the lower. And if we sort of pan down, we can see, it's tilt down, isn't it? Not pan, pans crosswise. We tilt down, we have a look at the pressure gauge and you can see it's risen to about 200 bar uh, already from the temperature. And what we're going to do is take that back down again. So I'm just going to release the jack and then pump it back up. Okay, so I've released the pressure. Again, it's a two-handed operation, so I can't show it. And we're just going to crank up. It automatically feels stiffer to start with. And there we are, up to around about 2,000 PSI. And right, and we've moved back up and we'll switch from manual to timer. And you can see the little power light has started flashing. Now this means it's now under the timed process. And in two and a half hours, uh, it will switch off and the temperature will start dropping. But I'm gonna come back at that point and then restart the timer at 90 degrees. So we'll come back for that. Um, while this is happening, of course, the pressure is still likely to increase. So you keep an eye on it. Again, if you've got delicate parts in the vulcanizing press that need the minimum pressure possible, then you really want to keep an eye on it. With the metal miniatures I've got in there today, I can actually just let the vulcanizer go up to pressure and work at maximum pressure. Um, as I say, you don't need a pressure gauge. It's jolly useful at low temperatures. Um, there are more basic ways of measuring the temperature, but digital readouts make life a lot easier. Um, I have seen recently a, a vulcanizer by Saunders, which basically you have to stick thermometers in the plates to read off as a cheap option um, and you adjust the temperature using a screw. Um, definitely dark ages stuff compared with this. Um, Seba does a range of vulcanizers. You can also get them to make 11 inch molds. I haven't found the need to. Um, the can in this vulcanizer is actually one by Coca's, which I had made for me because I'm when I got the Seba vulcanizer, the can I got with it was too deep and causes problems with some depths of rubber. Um, and so basically the cocoa one was a, a good solution to a problem that I could get done easily. Um, I'm rambling a bit there. But anyway, so cocoa can, uh, Seba mold. Uh, the Seba can that came with this machine is a beautifully machined piece of steel, really lovely engineering. Um, the cocoa one's slightly rougher. Uh, okay, so we will let this cook and we'll be back to uh, at the end of the process to see what's happened. And here we are at the end of the cycle for the vulcanizing. You can see on the process timer there's a little red solid light uh, which indicates that the timer has stopped. Um, temperatures are showing 90 uh, as a set because I changed it halfway through and the temperatures all on the patterns beginning to drop as it starts to cool down. Um, I'm now going to drop the jack and then let the mould can cool down before I open it. Um, normally open it when it's still warm at about 40 degrees.